Ontario proposes for six power projects in Nagaland for strengthening state's power system and earning revenue from power supply. Projects proposed at a cost of Rs 1,453.52 crore. Nagaland Medical College to commence first batch of MBBS from academic session 2023 to 24. Government announces construction works of the NMC and workforce recruitment processes to be completed by March 2023. Nagaland Foothill Road Coordination Committee resolves to remind the Department of PWD R and B to release the running bill to respective contractors on basis of performance. Committee further urges department to conduct a joint inspection to the Bhakti Division. Dimapur Bung celebrated its 7th Foundation Day at its office in Kalibari on Monday. The organization acknowledges selfless dedication of its members along with hailing contribution of its founder members. India continues to put a good show in Commonwealth Games by backing 22 gold and cementing four spot in the metal stelly. Shuttlers PV Sindhu and Lakshya Sen back gold in badminton singles, while Achinta Sharad Kamal wins gold in men's table tennis. Good evening viewers, you are watching Primetime News and this is Sasan, now news in detail. Chief Minister Nipirio, while speaking at the 7th meeting of the Governing Council of Niti Ayok in New Delhi on Sunday, proposed for six power projects for strengthening the state's power system and earning revenue from power supply. Chief Minister Rio put forward a proposal for Tizu Valley project, hydroelectricity project, at a cost of Rs 336.63 crore. Construction of two into five MW grid connected solar PV project at Sub Zadima at a cost of rupees 67.83 crore, 132 kV transmission system and kV distribution strengthening and improvement system along the foothill road at a cost of rupees 857.06 crore. Installation of smart meters in three major districts of Dimapur, Chumukirima, and Kohima at a cost of rupees 100 crore. Electrification of rural cluster of farm areas for rural economy at a cost of rupees 80 crore and 11 kv last mile connectivity under nerps sip at a cost of rupees 12 crore rio informed that the proposed projects would be in addition to the zinki hydroelectric project and lower the project which are already approved by the department of economic affairs The Nagaland Foothill Road Coordination Committee has adopted a resolution to remind the Department of PWD Road and Bridges to release the running bill to respective contractors on basis of performance to complete their works on time. The committee had cited that 90% of allocated works were completed. The committee further urged the department to conduct a joint inspection to the Bhakti division without much delay. Committee also resolved to hold an interactive meeting with the advisor of PWD R and B at the earliest. The NFHRCC also decided to convene a joint meeting village councils, local area CSOs, Stone Gravel and Boulder Contractors Union, Lok Contractors and So Mills Owners Union coal mining contractors and transporters union and respective tribal hohos along the foothills road stretch from Tizit to Newland on August 19 in Dimapur.
Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee on Monday through a press release slammed Assam Chief Minister Himanda Biswa Sarma stating that the Assam Chief Minister Party is derailing the much hoped for settlement to the problem of the problem of the political problem of Nagas. NPCC President K. T. Ray stated that Chief Minister of Assam should stop escorting Nagaland Chief Minister to PJP houses to derail settlement of the agreements. NPCC also claimed that NEDA convener Himanta is expected to oversee the welfare of regional peace and harmony in matters of law and order to promote growth of economy in the northeastern region. NPCC also stated that Himanta's role for Nagaland should have been to fulfill the commitment of PJP, which is election for solution. Thire also mentioned that all non-PJP chief ministers of Assam have been cordial to Nagaland. Thire stated that the scouting role of Himanta Biswa Sarma is derailing the much hoped for settlement to the political problems of Nagas. Nagaland government has announced its intention to commence Nagaland Medical College with first batch for 2023-24 to academic session. State government informed that the first batch of MBBS in Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery would be admitted for the academic session 2023-2024. to State government also informed about new revised work completion schedule of the Nagaland Medical College project. As per schedule, the timeline for completion of Medical College building was November 14, 2020. However, as per the second revised schedule, it is expected to be done by November 30, 2022. Construction of Hostel for Boys and Girls, which was scheduled to be done by March 5, 2021, will be completed by November 15, 2022 as per new schedule. Construction of 100 square meter apartment, which should have been completed by March 5, 2020, will now be completed by August 31, 2022. Construction of 200 square meter apartment is now expected to be completed by March 30, 2023. As per the second revised schedule, the sport complex was completed by April 1, 2022, and Dean residence by April 30, 2022. As per affidavit submitted to Koima Bench of Guwahati High Court, recruitments for one post of Dean, Director, Principal, one post of Medical Superintendent, sixth post of Professors, 22 post of Associate Professor, 23 post of Assistant Professors, 39 post of Senior Resident or Tutor, one post of Deputy Director Admin and one post of Deputy Director Finance would be completed by the month of September. The Mon Battalion of Assam Rifles organized cultural events and drawing competition at Don Bosco Higher Secondary School, Mon Town, on Monday. The event was organized under the team Azatika Amrit Mahotsav or 75 Years of Independence. The chief guest of the event was Commandant 27 Assam Rifles. The event saw participation of around 400 students where it featured patriotic dance, patriotic song, patriotic speeches and drill from cadets of scouts. Drawing and painting competition were also organized among the students. Notably, the aim of the event was to invoke the feeling of patriotism in the hearts of the people and to promote awareness about the Indian national flag and the importance of independence. An online booth was also placed at the school premises to pin digital flag on the government website www.hargartiranka.com whereby a total of 50 digital flags were pinned during the event. The participation from students, teachers and local authorities was commendable and they expressed gratitude towards Assam Rifles for organizing such events. Don't 
In pursuance of Har Ghar Tiranka campaign, Office of the Mapur Commissioner of Police on Tuesday is all set to organize a Brabat Peri morning walk carrying national flag by police officers in morning uniform, working uniform from 6 a.m. onwards. According to a press release, the walk will start from Office of CP Dimapur to City Tower to Office of CP Dimapur. Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi and Chief Minister Nipirio on the onset of Matam Neo Festival extended their greetings to the Yim Kiwung community. Mukhi extended his good wishes and wished good health, happiness and prosperity for all. Chief Minister Rio also took down to Twitter and hoped that the festivity would strengthen family, families and social bonds. Meanwhile, it may be mentioned that in, on this fifth day celebration, people pray for the deceased souls and also for good, wonderful harvest. Mukokchung Chamber of Commerce and Industry reaffirmed its stand against entertaining any kind of donations, taxation or any form of transaction that is not permissible by law. MCCI President Sukti Longkamer mentioned that MCCI received numerous reports about various elements, both underground and overground, trying to extort money from the business community upon which MCCI directed the business community not to entertain any such elements and to report to the MCCI office in any case of any suspected elements in the market. Meanwhile, it added that any member of the business community entertaining such unwanted elements shall be doing so at their own risk. The Dimapur Bongs celebrated the completion of seven successful years of serving society in Dimapur at its office in Kalibari on Monday. The organization was formed on 7 August 2015 and with the selfless dedication of its members, the organization is celebrating its seventh foundation day. The members sincerely acknowledged the contribution of its founder members who led the foundation stone. Notably, the organization started with very few people of empty minds but a tenacity to contribute something for the society and a will to achieve milestone. The members shared that they have achieved a lot and still have a long way to go. They believe that they can achieve a common goal by working together and staying united. Meanwhile, the members are very grateful to the well-wishers of Dimapur Bungs who contributed and helped them. আমাদের গীতা সম্বন্ধে এইটাতে আমি 1995 থেকে এটার উপর খুব ফলো করছি আমি কেন ফলো করছি আমি কোটকটি মাঠে মানে বহু গ্রামের মধ্যে তো আশ্রমটা ওখানে বহু মিটিং করছি আমি বহু মিটিং আছে কিন্তু গ্রামের মানুষরা বুঝতে পারে না জিনিসটাকে মানে এত গুরুত্ব দেয় তখন থেকে আমি ভগবানের দিকে মানে কোবে টানতাম কোবে টানতাম কোবে মানে বহুত কিছু চেষ্টা করে 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 তখন ভগবান আছে সব সময় প্রার্থনা করতাম আর গীতার কথাগুলো নিয়ে সব দিকে আলোচনা করতাম আমি তখন আমি ভাবতাম যদি একজন আমি মহারাজ যদি বৃন্দাবন দিয়ে আসতে আনতে পারি এখানে আনলে আমি একটা গীতা আশ্রম করব এটার উপরে খুব আমার ফলো কিন্তু আচ্ছা তখন ভগবানের কৃপায় আমাদের এই মহারাজজি আসছেন হ্যাঁ উনি এতটুকু বলছেন যে আমি এখানে এই শরীরে যতটুকু যতদিন আমার প্রাণটা আছে আমি ততদিন এখানে থাকব আর গীতার জন্য আমি একদম গীতা ভাগবত নিয়ে একদম পুরো তোমার সাথে আমি একদম হানড্রেড পারসেন্ট আছি তার জন্য আজকে আপনারাও আমাদের সাথে জড়িত হন আর বারো বিঘা চাইল্ড লুসা আমাদের ভূমি আছে ওইখানে রাধাকৃষ্ণ সেবা আসলো এইটা আমাদের একা কারণ না সবাই আছে আমাদের শান্তনু বিশ্বাস করে সবাই আছে বা আমাদের কিছু এখান থেকেও গেছে বংশের কিছু গেছে আমরা সবাই মিলে এগুলো আমাদের যে হিন্দু আমাদের সনাতনীয় ধর্ম যারা আমরা সবাই একটু ভাই ভাই North East Solo Dance Championship Season 2, organized by Trio Team and supported by Tafma, held its final finale on Sunday at Rotary Club Auditorium Dimapur. The finale was graced by Chitan 
Mazumder as, as chief guest and Dr. YG Jimomi as guest of honor. More than 50 participants from northeastern state competed against each other for the title. The championship was held under two categories, junior category and senior category. In the senior category, Abhik Gohain from Diprugar won the title, while Prema Shah from Diprugar won in the senior category. The championship was judged by Nabanita Sarkar and Anatoly Yeptomi. Assam Rifles on Monday inaugurated late Captain N. Kenguruse, MVC Center of Excellence and Wellness at Cheswema, Kohima. Notably, let General P.C. Nair Assam Rifles inaugurated the center. It is to be mentioned that the project has been conceived by the Assam Rifles to empower the youth of Nagaland through education and secure a better future for them. Director General P.C. Nair, while addressing the gathering, appreciated the efforts of IGAR North, Nido and Axis Bank in coming together towards the humanitarian cause, which will not only fulfill the drive of Im immensely talented youths of Nagaland, but will also usher prosperity and happiness in the society and the state. Assam Rifles DG also mentioned that this project would be able to bridge the gap and provide students and opportunity to achieve their dreams and contribute positively to the society, state and nation. OC Nair also highlighted that the mentoring will provide value best education including soft skill training, critical life competencies, leadership capacities, personal conditioning, wellness programs, vocational training, personality development and end-to-end -end grooming to the selected students to help them in becoming a productive human resource for the nation. It is to be mentioned that the project has been conceptualized as a year-long residential coaching and mentoring facility for students from economically weaker and underprivileged sections of Nagaland for prestigious competitive examinations like NEET and JE. And you are the pioneers, you are the people who started this mission. Uh, all I have uh, in the form of request to you and your parents is do with your very best. This opportunity doesn't come your way very often. If 30 of you have got selected, I'm sure there are 300 others who got there. Just think of those and I'm sure that we will be motivation enough. Thank you. Thank you once again, Jay. Overcome all difficulties and ensure that all the children sitting ahead achieve their dreams. Now, this project has immense potential. Apart from uh, imbibing uh, education, giving you education, it will also help in nation building. And nation building is uh, a block on which you all will climb up to get success for yourself. Koima District Basketball Association held its sex selection trial on Saturday at Don Bosco Higher Secondary School Koima for both men and women teams. Notably, the teams are set to represent the district in the upcoming Naglan Olympics and Paralympic Games 2022. Meanwhile, a total of 60 players, including 20 men and 40 women, turned up for the trials. The men's team had been shortlisted, however, shortlist for women's team is set is yet to be announced on August 9. Furthermore, Kekrela Salaku Keritsu is set to head the team as coach, while Tosovi Jordan Macro is set to be the manager. Amid talks of a possible split between Janata Dal United and the Bhatia Janta Party in Bihar, Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has called a meeting of all party MPs and MLS on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Speculations are being made about political upheaval in Bihar and a possible split between JDU and PJP. According to reports, the JDU is looking to form alliance with the Rashtriya Janta Dal, Congress and the Left Front in order to maintain its 
hold on power in the state because the majority of its MLAs are opposed to mid-term elections. This makes the coming two days important as Nitish Kumar may walk out of the alliance by accusing party leader RCP Singh of conspiring against JDU with the help of the PJP. In addition, Congress leader Ajit Sharma said that in view of the current political situation, Bihar Congress MLS have been asked to reach Patna by Monday evening. The Congress party meeting could take place between 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday met strong case for modernizing agriculture, animal husbandry and food processing to help the country become self-sufficient and global leader in the agriculture at the 7th Niti Aayog meeting. Modi also asked the states to focus on promoting the three T's, trade, tourism and technology with a view to reduce imports and increasing exports. Modi also encouraged to use local goods wherever possible, adding that vocal for local is not an agenda of single political party, but in fact a command goal. PM also appreciated the collective efforts of the states in the spirit of cooperative federalism in fight against the COVID pandemic. Lok Sabha on Monday paid tribute to martyrs and freedom fighters of the independence movement on the occasion of the 80th anniversary of the Quit India movement. As soon as the House met for the day after the weekend break, Speaker Om Birla said on this day 80 years ago, Mahatma Gandhi had launched the Quit India movement that led to India attaining independence on August 15, 1947. While paying glowing tributes to the martyrs and freedom fighters he said that their sacrifices gave inspiration to everyone to serve the nation with dedication Outgoing Vice President and Rajat Sabha Chairman Venkaya Naidu in his outgoing speech appealed to maintain decency, dignity and decorum so that the image and respect of the House is maintained. Bidding farewell to Naidu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi pointed out that several decisions taken by Naidu will be remembered for the upward journey of the House. Meanwhile, the leader of opposition in the House, Malikarjun Karge, also stated that though they may have different ideologies, he thanked Naidu for carrying out his responsibilities even under pressure. To maintain decency, dignity, and decorum so that the image of the house and the respect of the house is maintained and people will be receptive to show us, to hear us, and also to follow our advice. This is my advice to all of you. As I told you, the students, the rural people, the ordinary people, they will be watching the parliamentary proceedings. That's why sometimes I have to intervene and I have to be strict and also I have to take a, not a very happy decision of uh, naming some people. Otherwise, it gives me no enjoyment to take such. BJP on Sunday slammed Ashok Gelot for his rap low remarks and said that the Rajasthan chief minister was trying to hide his government's failures to curb rising incidents of atrocities against women in the state. Union Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Shekawat said that the Ashok Gelot statement is unfortunate. 
Chekawat noted that in the last three years, Rajasthan has become the center for atrocities against young innocent girls. Nothing can be more unfortunate as the issue is being twisted by the chief minister by making controversial statements to hide his failures. At a press conference in Delhi last Friday, Rajasthan Chief Minister Gelot said that the cases of murder after rape have increased in the country following the law that provides that sentences for rape convicts came into force. Gelot had said that the rapist sees that the girl will become a witness tomorrow. So he not only rapes but also kills her. This is happening across the country. This is a very dangerous trend, remarks Gelot. मंत्री साहब ने जो बयान दिया है ये बहुत शर्मसार बयान है और बहुत दुख पहुंचा है इससे खासकर मुझे और जो भी ऐसे परिवार होंगे ऐसी बच्चियां होंगे उनको क्योंकि उन्होंने एक तरह से इसका मजाक उड़ाया है निर्भया का मजाक उड़ाया है मैं उनसे यही पूछना चाहती हूँ इस चैनल के माध्यम से कि निर्भया के साथ जो घटना हुई उस टाइम उनकी सरकार थी उनका बनाया हुआ कानून था अब 50 सालों शायद किसी रेपिस्ट को फांसी नहीं हुई होगी 50 सालों में फिर हमारे निर्भया के साथ ऐसा घटना क्यों हुआ क्यों उसको मारा गया उसके पहले भी जो बच्चियों के साथ घटनाएँ हुई मारी गई बच्चियाँ क्यों मारी गई मैं उनसे ये पूछना चाहती हूँ अगर निर्भया निर्भया वो कह रहे हैं कि निर्भया के मुजरिमों को फांसी हुई तो आका उसका घटना हुआ कानून बना तो घटनाएं बढ़ गई तो कहीं ना कहीं ये उनकी मानसिकता दर्शाता है कि उन लोगों की सोच कैसी है On Monday, Chief Zena MP Sanjay Rawat has been sent to judicial custody till August 22 in connection with the Patra Chola land case. While the court allowed all the medicines to Chief Sena leader in judicial custody, which he was allowed in ED custody. Earlier on August 1, Rawat was sent to Enforcement Directorate's custody till August 4 in the same, same case. Later, on the same day, ED produced him before a special session court after his arrest. Maharashtra cabinet expansion to take place at 11 a.m. on Tuesday at Maharashtra Raj Bhavan. Maharashtra Chief Minister Egnat Shinde is expected to expand his cabinet this week by inducting 15 ministers and Deputy Chief Ministers. Minister Devendra Fatnavis is expected to keep the crucial home portfolio. Notably, both the ministers have been functioning as a two-member cabinet, inviting criticism from opposition leaders, including NCP leader and former Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar. Maharashtra Chief Minister Egnat Shinde is scheduled to visit Maharashtra's Nandate district on Monday. The visit comes on the heels of the expulsion of Chief Sena's Nadeit district, Chief Umesh Munde and several other leaders for indulging in anti-party activities. The Chief Sena President Udav Thakre on Sunday sacked Munde and other leaders from the party. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Shinde was in the national capital on Sunday to participate in the Niti Ayok meeting chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Lashing out at the center for distributing the peaceful atmosphere of the country, Delhi Chief Minister and Aam Admi Party National Convener Arvind Kedriwal on Monday demanded the central government that, as India celebrates 75 years of independence, he demanded the central government to provide good, free education, health care, 300 units of electricity and unemployment allowances in the country. Based on the devastating demise of Mandip Kaur, a Punjabi woman due to harassment and abuse, a letter requesting urgent intervention to Ministry of External Affairs have been submitted.
uh, MP Raghav Chadda met external affairs minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar on Monday and demanded justice for Mandeep Kaur, who died by suicide on August 3rd after facing domestic violence. The MP sought for urgent steps to prevent reoccurrence and provide means to Indian women living abroad to escape cycles of violence and abuse by perpetrators of such crimes. Adding on, hashtag justice for Mandeep Kaur has been trending on Twitter demanding justice for the deceased. The Central Bureau of Investigation held a branch manager of the Central Bank of India in Uttar Pradesh for allegedly demanding a bribe to allow the deceased son to withdraw money from his father's account, who died during COVID-12. While the CBI has received a complaint through email into the matter, where the complainant who, who's, who lives in Village Devgar of Lalitpur district in Uttar Pradesh has alleged that branch manager of Central Bank of India, Jaklowan branch in Lalitpur, demanded rupees 13,000 for allowing withdrawal of money from the bank account of his late father. In a good news, India's Lakshya Sen won the men's single badminton gold medal at the Commonwealth Games 2022 in Birmingham, UK on Monday. In his Commonwealth Games debut, Lakshya Sen came from a game down to beat Malaysia's NG Tiz Yon 19 by 21, 21 by 19, 21 by 16 in the final. Notably, this is the 21-year-old Lakshya's first CWG gold and his second medal after winning silver earlier in the mixed team event. It is to be mentioned that this is India's second badminton gold of the day to two-time Olympic medalist PV Sindhu won her first CWG singles gold medal. Sen in the finals never looked back at as he steadily maintained his lead and confirmed the gold medal with a cross-court winner from the net. So viewers, that's all in the news. Keep watching Nagaland TV for more news and updates.